Well, hello, beautiful people of the internet, and welcome back to my zine, your digital fashion magazine. For those who don't know, I was a ballet ballerina for 14 years of my life, and that's why when the ballet court trend started appearing, I had a lot of mixed feelings. See, I would always dress in my own way to go to ballet class. I always bought my leotards black and my skirt black. I never liked ballet flats as streetswear, and look at me now. And for a long time, I didn't wear leg warmers because I felt like that wasn't cool to wear them in class, and I always wanted to look cool. And that is why I am super excited about this video concept, which is ballet core but make a grunge. I was talented by Minga London, which is an awesome Portuguese brand, the Styler No Collection that is all about a grunge version of ballet core, which is basically how I would what I would wear when I was in like 10th grade in my ballet classes but a street style version. But it is not just going to be a lookbook, I'm going to be covering some fashion history about how ballet has influenced um, fashion through the history and the background of ballet flats and leg warmers and what consists of ballet gore. So I hope you guys like this video and without further ado, let's just get into it. So thank you Minga, <laughs> I'm just kidding. So thank you Minga for sponsoring this video and collaborating with me. All right, so the ballet core hashtag has had over 9.5 million views on TikTok. And the best definition that I found to describe this aesthetic is as a comfy athleisure meets the dreamy ethereal aesthetic with elegance and ease. Some of the items that make ballet core are leg warmers, ballet flats, mini skirts, wrap skirts and wrap tops, tights, pastel collars, flowy maxi skirts, the use of satin and tulle, corsets, ribbons, and I actually have an argument which I think only ballerinas would notice this. You know how the Ugg boot is very popular right now, like the, the lower rise one? So when you do point shoes, which I did for a long time, but I never had these boots, um, you have these boots that are like this, and you use them to keep your feet warm so that you have less of a risk of damaging or hurting your feet when you're in point, because if your feet is like not warm and it's really cold and then you go on point, it can damage your feet, so you know, Professional ballerinas would use, will use these boots to keep your, their feet warm when you're backstage or when you're in class waiting to dance, stuff like that. And those boots are actually very similar to the Ugg boots and the Moon boots that are also in style right now. I definitely don't think that that was made in purpose because I don't think almost anyone knows these like secret boots that ballerina wear, but I just thought it was funny to mention that because I personally never had a pair of those boots. They were really expensive, um, but it kind of makes sense, you know. So pausing history here for a little bit. This is outfit number one, which is a bit out of my comfort zone and I'm loving it. I'm wearing this um, mesh patterned blouse that actually has ballerina pattern all over it. And then I'm wearing this ruffle skirt that kind of reminds me of some skirts that I used to wear for my contemporary um, choreographies. I was a little bit scared that it was low waisted because I have a little bit of an insecurity with my belly, but it actually fits super well and I've added this little belt to give it more of a grunge look. I am actually wearing my ballet tights, you guys. I stopped doing ballet right before COVID, no, right after COVID hit, which would be like three years ago. And I swear to you, there are no, there's not a single pair of better tights than my ballet tights. They are so thick and I'm wearing these leg warmers from Minga, my loafers. Um, oh, and I want to wear a necklace. Wait, I love uh, using ballet core stuff and then picturing myself in class if I would actually wear that. I'd obviously wear this like warmers, um, not the skirt, but I would definitely use this top on top of my leotard because we were always trying to like style our leotards and our dance outfits and spicing them up with like street style clothes that would still be comfy and flowy enough for us to dance. Sliding into outfit number two. Um, we've got a kitten skirt. Um, I love this blouse and they have it in different colors and I was actually going to pick the white slash beige version, but then I reminded myself that when I was in Slovenia, I think I already told the story, but when I was in Slovenia traveling with some friends, um, one of my friends told me that like all of my outfits are me pairing a different white top with like cool pants and I literally looked at my backpack and I had like 10 different white tops. I'm always wearing a white top, turtleneck, like whatever. So I was like, okay, 
Let's not pick the white one, which was what I instantly ran into, and let's pick the black one. And I actually have this belt right here that's from my grandma. And I was thinking if I should pair it like underneath and see how it is. I tried the lace top, but I didn't really like it. But getting back to our fashion history moment right here, the ballet has been an object of fascination for years and years in art and history. You can see that with Edgar Degas. Uh, paintings with ballerinas, with the movie of the Black Swan. And I didn't know this, but huge designers have been um, involved in making the clothes for and the costumes for a lot of huge ballet productions. So in 1924, Coco Chanel created the looks for the ballet russes. In the 1930s, tutu inspired evening dresses were fabricated with materials such as silk, tulle, and chiffon. In 1942, the designer Claire McCardle needed shoes for a fashion presentation and she actually ended up pairing um, actual ballet flats from Casu, which is a huge ballet brand for her show, which is probably what inspired ballet flats to become a thing in street style, which is crazy. Like, she was just looking for shoes, and she couldn't find a pair that she actually liked, and so she just paired it with ballet shoes. It's really good for me to realize how, outside of my bubble, ballet has influenced a lot of things, especially in fashion, and it's also funny for me to think how other sports have influenced fashion, like, something so random as the riding boots now being trendy. So this dress is literally the dress that I wore to my Roaring Twenties themed birthday party and I really love it because I didn't have a classic um, versatile long black dress and now I do. You know, I have to go dressed with normal clothing to the backstage and then I switch into my leotards, my tutus and whatever. I feel like this would be a dress that I would wear in a ballet gala night. Um, to go in and then to go out at the end of the night. Styling it with my dupe tabbies. And then I'm wearing this necklace, which is literally my favorite thing that I got. I'm literally so obsessed with it. I've been wearing it every single day. I also forgot all of my cute rings at my grandma's house the other day. So I'm just wearing my two staple gold rings. I'm actually going to take my gold hoops and pair this with these little red um, clip-on earrings that are so cute. They sort of look like candy and I bought them in like literally someone that was in the middle of the street in Greece selling like earrings and I think I paid like cents for these clip ones. I'm always lazy at my lookbooks. This is so bad because this is literally a fashion channel. But I'm always lazy with the accessories because for some reason I'm lazy to take my earrings off and put like three billion different earrings for each outfit. Um, but I need to start doing that because I wear so many accessories in my daily life and then in my lookbooks I'm just lazy. Anyways, before we get into the controversy of ballet core, let's just talk about Minga. So Minga wants their pieces to have longevity in your closet and minimize the harmful impact that the fashion industry has on our planet and communities. They're super inclusive with their sizes. They literally will have from the X small to the extra, extra, extra large on all of the pieces, I think. They have 28 employees who work with passion every day and 95% of their products are made in Portugal, either in their own manufacturing unit or in other local family-owned suppliers. They literally know everyone who makes their clothes because they have lunch together, they party together, and they respect the planet together. You guys know how much I appreciate and I literally make an effort to mention everything about the sustainability of a brand that I work with and they are doing an awesome job with their employees, where they're manufacturing, the fabrics that to use, the inks. Now, is ballet core problematic? There's been a huge buzz, for example, on magazine covers where ballerinas are portrayed but they are represented by models that have never acted, like a 2016, I think, cover on Vogue by Kendall Jenner. The conversation around that is basically how if those magazines want to use ballet or other types of dances or even sports as the editorial look for their magazines, they should go out and help and sponsor or pay or just represent actual people that do those sports instead of always giving the roles to models. Let's face it, ballet is a very elitistic, elitist a sport and it does promote a lot of body stereotypes. In order for you to be on point, for example, you have to have a very specific body structure so that you don't literally ruin your feet even more. But even when we're talking about 
non-professional ballet environments like the one that I was at where it wasn't a professional ballet company that I could pursue that as a career. Teachers or institutions wouldn't really be very inclusive. I feel like there should be a lot more openness to ballet and to different people trying and doing ballet. You know, obviously if you're above a certain weight that's healthy for you to do on point, you don't do one point, but you do other things and you can experiment. If you're not being professional, and then when it comes to the magazine covers, in my own personal opinion, I do see both sides. Obviously, I would prefer for magazines to use actual dancers or actual chefs or actual people from the industry they're trying to represent because if they're showing admiration or if they're showing something as cool, then they should show the people that are actually dedicating their life to that craft. But then I also see how models are basically like actresses and so it's also normal that they will use models. So it's, it's kind of a touchy subject and I think there's a very fine line between what's right and what's wrong. Ballet is a very romanticized sport. In a lot of sports, we can ride, ride ahead, see how difficult and harsh they are and how bad they could be to our bodies. But ballet is a sport that people tend to not think about that. We've gone from one extreme to the other when it comes to being educated about certain topics when we portray them online. Fashion at the end of the day has a big cultural component and then it has a big fully just aesthetic superficial component and I think we just need to find a balance between that. So yeah, outfit number three, outfit number four, I think it's outfit number four. We are wearing my current favorite sweater. I've literally worn it five days of the week last week in this card. Um, the necklace that I'm obsessed with, my loafers, and some cool tights. My microphone just went out of battery, so we're gonna have to deal with the iPhone audio, but New Muse and Rodart's latest collections, I feel like we're the cherry on top of the cake to make this whole ballet wave, like, impulsionate itself. That word definitely does not exist, like, you, you got what I'm saying. I bought a pair of ballet flats that are so, so, so cute especially like literally for this video and it was supposed to arrive two days ago and they didn't something i love about this collection is something that rarely happens with me which is i buy a ton of clothes and then i can't pair them together to make a bunch of outfits so i feel like i just bought a lot of stuff but i don't really know how to style it and that didn't happen with this collection i feel like i can literally style every piece with every piece i just need to put these pants on and it's a completely different outfit or i can literally lift the skirt and the sneakers and the tights and take these top and put this one and you got yourself another outfit. Outfit number, insert the number here because I don't remember. And last but not least, I have literally been using the outfit I'm going to put on for the past three days. And I feel like I, I, I used to never wear sweaters and now I'm wearing this sweater every day. Like literally, there is not a single sweater in my wardrobe right now. And for some reason, I'm loving this outfit. I always thought that sweaters were not cool because they weren't super stylish and you couldn't do a lot of things with them and you kind of monopolize the outfit. But I don't mind this little cute sheep to monopolize my outfit. So yeah, this was the video, guys. I hope you liked seeing me style grunge ballet core outfits. Thank you, Minga, again for collabing with me because I'm literally so happy to be using and rocking this collection. And I loved having an excuse to mention my 14 years of ballet. Comment down below your thoughts, follow me on Instagram, and I'll see you next video next Sunday.